Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it is such a blessed day. And it, it reminds me of a song that uh, I'm reminded of a song that I wrote about um, one and a half years ago. And then it says, I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. Your love, your grace, your mercy. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. Your love, your grace. Whoa, Jesus. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about the love of God that I really didn't deserve it. You know, the Bible says um, uh, in Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says that uh, His works, God's works for us who believe were already accomplished from the foundations of the world. And then it also, the Bible also talks about the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Did you know that the, the, the works of God concerning your life, concerning your destiny, they were already accomplished from the very foundations of the earth. Even before you are born, your victory was already waiting for you. Your prosperity was already waiting for you. Your healing was already waiting for you because the Lamb was slain from the foundations of the earth from the foundations of the world for our sake, for our victory. And so there was no way that we can fail to rejoice in the Lord and be glad and be grateful. So I'm like, God, like, did I really deserve this? Like, you died for me. You paid the, the, the price for me. You gave me victory even before I was born. <laughs> can you imagine that? And so there is this song that says, um, uh, things are already better. Things are already better When the Lord is on my side Things are already better Things are already better Things are already better Come on, say If you're we tell it day 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 And then in, in Arabic it says Kulu haja semen, kulu haja semen. Laura pura fimai, kulu haja semen, kulu haja semen, kulu haja semen. Hey, kulu haja semen, kulu haja semen. Laura pura fimai, kulu haja semen, kulu haja semen. I'm reminded of the scripture in Romans and it says that um, if God is for us, no, it begins by saying, what can we say to all these things? The very fact that uh, uh, at first it talks about that God, actually like all things are working together for those who who love God. All things are working together for their own good. And so downwards, he says that what can we say to all of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I mean, if God has already given you the victory, no matter what the enemy does, your victory is your victory. And the Bible says that uh, uh, nothing can ever separate us from the love of God, having said that uh, in all things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. And he said, what can separate us from the love of God? Neither death no life, no demons, no angels, neither things present or things in the future, neither all powers, neither height or depth of any pain, of any trouble, of any of, 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 of any hardship can separate us from the victory that Christ has won for us. So if there is nothing that can separate us from the love that God has won for us, then nothing should stop us praising and loving and worshiping God. And so again, I want to sing that song that I wrote. Um, about uh, one and a half years ago, it says, I didn't deserve it. I mean, your love, when you think about God is love, I'm like, like, really? God, like, me, Sheila? Like, you have to do all these things for me. I'm like, I really don't deserve this all. And so the song says, I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. Your love, your grace, your mercy. I didn't deserve it. I didn't I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. Your love, your grace, whoa, Jesus. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. 
side and hide it in tears side and you lock your breasts. Whoa, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is so wonderful having you for all of you who have just joined me. Thank you so much for joining in on I Met God Worship Encounter. It is always a pleasure having you online. And so we're just going to be continuing. Lord, we want to thank you so much for such a beautiful day. We want to thank you so much for such a, a great season that you have put before us. And this is the day that you have made for us. You're increasing us. Your mercies are new even today. You are taking us higher and higher and higher and higher in our knowledge and wisdom and understanding and counsel in mind for the spirit of the Lord is in our midst but we want to thank you because your word is a lamp unto our feet the Bible says it is sharper than the double it is sharper than the double-edged sword and it penetrates through the soul, through the spirit, through the marrows. We thank you because your word is penetrating and it is illuminating our thoughts, it is illuminating our mind, it is illuminating our imaginations and it is setting us free because the Bible says that you know the truth and the truth will set you free. We thank you Holy Spirit you are awesome. We thank you for your presence. Oh my God, there is nothing, nothing, nothing like your presence. Amen and amen. So we are going to be continuing with our study. Uh, if you weren't with us last week, we are looking at the characteristics of praise. And we go to see that number one, that praise puts God in the first place, which he deserves to be, where he deserves to be, and where he has commanded us to put him. And number two characteristic of praise is praise flows from a relationship with God. In other words, show me someone who knows how to praise God, and I will show you someone who has built a close relationship with God. Today we are continuing with number three characteristic of praise. And we get to see that praise, our number three characteristic of praise is that praise is a conscious choice. Did you know that did you know that praise is an act of your will? It is not a feeling, it is not an emotional thing, it is not a I feel like thing. No, it is a conscious choice that you make to praise God to corner him because he deserves it because he has commanded it and because of who he is and whatever that he has done so so many times we we, we may not feel like praising God that doesn't mean that we should not praise God because if you are to wait to feel like praising God before you can praise him, I can guarantee you, you're going to have to wait for, for, for eternity. <laughs> you're going to have to wait forever. Because in this world, as long as we're on earth, we are always exposed to challenges, to hardships, to storms. And even Jesus said it, that in this world, you'll have hard times. But you know what? Tech, be of good cheer because I have overcome. I have already given you victory. So in other words, even in the worst of our times, God still commands us to praise him. Why? Because he deserves it and because he wants to act on our behalf. Did you know that even in the midst of whatever that you might be facing, that God wants to intervene, God wants to act on your behalf. But you know what? He cannot act on your behalf except there is an altar, except you, 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 you give him a throne of your praise because our praise is a throne on which he dwells. Unless we give him room through our praise, he cannot act on our behalf. So that is why he continually demands us to praise him even in the worst of times. I want to remind you that praise is not a feeling thing. It is not an emotional thing. No, it is a predetermined conscious choice that one makes to always exhort, to always praise, to always give thanks to God for who he is and not to withhold that praise because of whatever circumstance that they are going through. And uh, one thing is for sure, that God does not, uh, does not need our praise for survival. But we need praise to survive. Why? Because we need the presence of God and the presence of God is released through our praise. So whatever that you do, every day in your daily life remember that you need praise to survive because you need the presence of god i want us briefly to look at um 
Psalms chapter 42. Please, if you would open your Bibles with me, Psalms 42. It was written by the sons of Korah. These were the Levites who were involved in the music ministry of the temple. And so it gives us a, some, it gives us a scenario of where the psalmist was faced with troubles, with challenges everywhere. And in verses 3 actually says... Uh, it begins by saying that uh, I long for the streams of water. I long for you, my God. I long for the presence of God. I long for the miracles. I long for the for the for the enjoyment of the presence of God. And then number three days, he says that my tears have become my food day and night because of what he was going through. You know, have you ever been in a certain situation and uh, whereby you're so overwhelmed by the situation that you you are facing and you can't even eat food when when it's time for a meal. You even lose appetite you simply cry because the situation is way beyond you well this is for you and then number number still down there uh, it says that people all day long say to me they ask me where is your God you know have you ever been in a situation where people are like let us see she's always praying she's always ministering to God let us see if this God will deliver her where is your God where is your God to heal that sickness where is your God to take away that dead where is your God to do this and this and this and this for you have you been in a, such such a kind of situation where people are asking people are mocking you that where is your God is your God powerful enough to save you this was the same situation that the psalmist was going through and then I want so much to focus on verses 5. It says that, why are you depressed? Why this turmoil within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet still praise him, my Savior and my God. You know, the psalmist again turned in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the storms that he was going through to an extent that he, all he had for his food day and night were his tears. He still turned back to his soul because he didn't feel like you know, the soul didn't the soul was very discouraged. It didn't feel like it didn't feel like praising God. And so the psalmist turns to the soul and says, Why are you discouraged? Oh my soul, why are you downcast? Why are you sad? My soul, have hope in God, for I am still yet to praise Him, my God and my Savior. What does this teach us? What does this prove to us? It proves to us that uh, much as the psalmist had found reasons to be discouraged, because he says that my tears have become my meal day and night. I mean, he had reasons to be discouraged for whatever situation that he was going through. But then again, he turns to his soul and says, why are you then discouraged? Why are you downcast that you cannot praise God? Why are you downcast that you cannot give thanks to God? So even if there were reasons of being discouraged, there were reasons of being sad, of being anxious, of being worried, the psalmist still had reasons to have hope in God. He still had reasons to praise God. Did you know that for every like 10 reasons that you have to be discouraged, to be depressed, to be sad, there are over a hundred reasons for you to still have hope in God, to still praise God. So when we when we are in a midst of, our, of, of worse situations, in a midst of challenges, when our souls are so discouraged, when we our souls are so depressed and you don't even feel like praising God, you need to have a chat with yourself and you say you ask yourself why are you discouraged why are you depressed why don't you want to praise God don't you know that his faithfulness endures forever don't you know that his love for you endures forever don't you know that even in this valley of the shadow of the death that he is with you don't you know that even in the rivers when you walk in the, in the fire in the waters that he is with you and that he's going to redeem you and that he's going to save you and that he's going to help you you need to have a chat with your soul and say, my soul, why are you discouraged? I know you are going through this. I know you are ha having pain, but God is still faithful. God is still your savior. He's going to save you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to give you joy and he's going to make a way for you. And the psalmist says that I have hope in God because I will still praise him. In other words, he was saying that I have decided I'm going to praise God. 
I've made a conscious choice. I'm going to praise God. It doesn't matter whether you follow me or not, whether you're in agreement or not, whether you, my feelings. He was talking to his feelings. He was talking to his emotions. And sometimes we need to talk to our emotions. We need to talk to our feelings. And like, if even if you don't feel like praising God, I have made up my mind. I have a conscious choice. I'm going to praise God, whether you follow me or not. Hmm? Praise is a conscious choice. It is an act of your will. It is not. It has nothing to do with your emotions, with your feelings. We see this in Psalms 42. Hmm? The psalmist, the psalmist's soul was dis depressed. The psalmist's soul was discouraged. His soul was was sad, was worried, was in an, was in anxiety. But for him, he said, "I will still praise my God." You know. So it teaches us: you don't need to wait for your feelings. You don't need to wait for your emotions to praise God. You don't need to wait to feel like praising God before you can praise Him anyway. No! He says, even if my emotions don't follow me, I'm still going to praise my God. Why? Because I know He is my Savior. My help comes from Him. Mm -hmm. And says, my help still comes from Him. No matter what I'm going through, no matter how great is my need, God is still my ever-present help in times of need. And so the psalmist says, yes, I know I'm in pain, but I'm still going to praise God. I know I need this and that and that, but I'm still going to praise God. Yes, I know it feels like I've lost it again, but I'm still going to praise God. Yes, I am in great pain. I am in sickness, but I'm still going to praise God. Yes, I know my creditors are on my neck. They are maybe threatening to take me to court, but I'm still going to praise my God. Yes, I know I'm in a situation where I see no way out, but I'm still going to praise my God. Yes, I I know people are mocking me. They are asking me, where is your God? But I'm still going to praise my God. Yes, I know I'm going through a lot of pain. I'm crying tears day and night. But I'm still going to praise my God. Yes, I know my business failed. I know I, did, I made losses. But I'm still going to gonna praise my God. Yes, I know I'm having challenges in my marriage. I'm having challenges with my children, but I'm still gonna praise my God. Yes, I know it feels like I'm not making any progress in my career like I would want to. It seems like I'm, every time I try to do things are not moving. Every time I fail, but I'm gonna praise my God. I'm still gonna praise my God. That was the attitude of the psalmist in 42, in chapter 42. He says, yes, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know this. I know. I can see what is going on around. Yes, I'm in need. Yes, I'm in lack. But I'm gonna still praise my God. And you know what? When you make a conscious choice to praise God, regardless of what surrounds you. Heaven may be silent. It may be silent for a moment, but it will not be silent forever to a person who has made a conscious choice to praise God always for who he is. Heaven will definitely respond to that person. It may not respond right now. You may not see God is God responding right now. Heaven may be silent, but it will not be silent forever to a person who is determined, who has made up his mind, who has made a conscious choice to always praise God. And you know what? Sometimes you can be there and you're saying that, Sheila, really? Can I praise God? How can I praise God? When I'm facing this, when I'm facing that, you know, actually the psalmist, when you read down in verses 7, he says, Deep calls unto the deep in the row of your waterfalls, and all your breakers and your billows have swept over me. But the Lord will send his faithful love by day. He says that it feels, it feels like all of, all of the storms, all of challenges, all of life's challenges have come on me. It feels like on every side, the psalmist could look to, there were enemies. But he said, in the depth of my pain, in the depth of my trouble, I'm going to raise my praise higher. I'm going to raise my thanksgiving higher. Because he says, deep calls unto the depth 
in the depth of my pain, I'm going to call for the depth of God's presence to supply to my needs. And you know, sometimes we, we are faced with challenges with certain situations, and it is it, it is it seems like it is a, a, a deep a deep pain. It feels like this time on things are so worse. And sometimes our mind, our mind is wrestling, and it's like, huh, I know. I know God, you've, you've healed people. I know you make the blind see. I know you make the lame to walk. I know you open the, the eyes of the blind and you make the deaf to hear. But God, this time around, hey, this situation, my dear, I don't know God, can you help me? This time around, the situation is worse. And you're like, I know you provided the other time. Huh? But this time, my dear friend, God, this time around, things are way worse. <laughs> and, and, and your reasoning is like, I know God the other time you delivered me out of the other out of the other problem. But this time on it feels like things are worse. And you know, when you are in that depth, when your pain is deep, when your need is deep, when your sorrow, when your sorrows are deep, and your mind is questioning you, will God be able this time around to help you? Because the, 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 your pain is so deep. I have some good news for you. I have some good news for you. There is a depth of God's glory to answer every depth of human need, every depth of human pain, the depth of human sorrows. There is a depth in God. There are riches of glory in God to supply to the depth of our needs to supply to answer the depth of our pain no your pain it may be deep but it's not great it's not too great that the depth of god's glory cannot answer it that the depth of god's glory cannot attend to it no way that cannot happen the depth man is depth of need is not greater than God's depth. No way. God is depth. The riches of his glory, they are so great to supply to whatever need, to whatever desire, to whatever question that you might be having in your life. And so he says, the depth call, calls unto the depth. In your deep pain, they are riches of glory in the depth of your need to supply to that very need. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he says, I know that in the day you will answer me. You will command your faithful love towards me. You will reach out to me no matter the depth of my pain, no matter the depth of my need, no matter the depth of my sorrow. I know that you will still reach out to me because there is a depth of glory in God to supply, to answer to every need that we will ever find in life. And I want, and, 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 and you know, I, I want to, I, sometimes when we praise God, we may not see situations moving there and then. Because you're like, how can I praise God? Because even if I do that, I don't see any change in my situation. I don't see my mountains moving. You ought to praise him, even if you see nothing happening in the physical realm, even if you, see, you don't see the manifestation of his power. You ought to praise him, make that conscious choice. Because you know what? Things are moving in the spiritual realm, even if you don't see any manifestation in the physical realm. That day that you see a physical manifestation, that day you see the intervention of God in your situation is not the day that God has answered. It's not the day that your praise has made effect. It's not the day that you have begun to pray. No, you have been praying all along. And all along, God has been moving things in the spiritual realm. God has been shifting things in the spiritual realm. Even if you do not see the manifestation right now in the physical realm, God is shifting things in the spiritual realm. God is, 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 is dealing with things in the spiritual realm. And finally, when you see the victory of God in the physical realm, is actually not when you have prayed so much. No, when we see victory in the physical realm, it is because all along things have been moving in the spiritual realm. And so Corinthians says that do not lose heart 
even if our outward man is perishing our inward man is being renewed day by day and it says at the end of it all our light and momentary troubles will achieve for us an internal glory that far outweighs them but how can that be because day by day you have been renewing your inner man by praising God, by giving him thanks, by speaking the word of God over your situation. You have been renewing your inner man. And as you're renewing your inner man, things are moving in the spiritual realm. Even if you don't see the effect right now, even if you don't see the manifestation of God's power right now in the physical realm. So that ought not to discourage you. Even if you don't see things moving, keep praising God. Make that conscious choice that I'm going to praise God for who he is. No matter what I see, I know that he is my God. He is my Savior. At the end of the day, he's going to come through for me. This was the attitude of Sam, of the psalmist in chapter 42. And finally, I want to finish with a, a testimony. You know, there, there was a time when... Um, when I was facing depression, when I was, uh, when I was uh, going through a lot of, uh, when I was going through a devastating moment in life. And you know, during that period, after, I mean, after when I was, when I was struggling with depression and uh, devastation in my life, God finally gave me victory. God finally got me to the other side of life and he delivered me from depression and he delivered me from devastation. But I do believe that, that one of the most important factors that led me to the victory, to that victory, is because I had made up my mind. I had made a conscious choice to continue praising God for who he is, no matter what I was seeing before me. And during that time, you know, people were asking questions. People were mocking. Let us see her God. Where is her God? Where is your God? You've been serving God. You've been, uh, you've been doing this. You've been giving. You've been doing that and that. Where is your God? Why can't he deliver you from this kind of situation? And, and you know, there was enemies all around me. And uh, during that time, even if I would go to church, sometimes you'd go to even church to pray. But after church, after service, you're like, why did I even go? Because the same way that you went to church is the same way that you came out of church. And sometimes you praise God. I would praise God and I would feel like, it feels like God has even never existed. It feels like God has never even existed in my life. And, and you talk words, you read the word, and it, it even doesn't make any sense, any sense to you. You speak the word of God, and it feels like they're empty words. That is how I used to feel, because I was going through a lot of depression during that season in my life. But you know what? I said, God, hmm? I don't care. I said, I don't care whether I feel it or not. I don't care whether people are mocking me or not. I don't care whether, I'm, I'm, whether I'm, I'm in pain, whether I'm in great pain, whether I'm in tears. I don't care. I'm going to continue to do what I think you desire of me. I'm going to continue to do what I know you desire me to do, what I know you want me to do. I'm going to continue praising you. I'm going to continue giving. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to continue serving you. I'm going to continue doing good. I'm going to continue speaking your word. Even if I don't feel like it makes sense. I said I'm not going to stop praising you. I made a conscious choice to praise God. And you know what? It wasn't long before heaven responded to me. Yes, it was silent for a time because I struggled with depression for a while. But in that struggle, I did not stop praising God. No, I did not stop reading the word. Even if whenever I read the word, I didn't, I didn't understand anything. I did not stop. And I'm telling you today that God responded to me. Heaven responded to me because I made a conscious choice. I was determined to praise God and not to stop no matter what came my way. And heaven responded to me. And today, God has totally set me free. And he has restored me. <laughs> you know, the other time, I used to even see people when people are laughing. And you, can you, have you ever been in a situation whereby 
you see people are laughing and you laugh, and even get angry and you get annoyed because someone is laughing because to you there is nothing to laugh about in life to you life is so bitter <laughs> and so when you see people are laughing when you see people rejoicing you even get angry because you know what the only the, the, the only thing that def hmm? the only thing that determines your life is bitterness so we want to thank God and I want to encourage you to make that conscious choice every day to praise God and not to stop because even if heaven is silent now it will not be silent forever <laughs> it will not be and remember that there are riches of glory there are depth of God is glory to meet every depth of your need so never stop praising him after all Ephesians says that unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask for to him be the glory and the praise forever and evermore thank you so much for staying online remember we've been looking at number three characteristic of praise and that is praise is a conscious choice don't wait to feel like praising God before you can praise him because you might actually wait for ever make that choice that conscious choice to praise him no matter what comes your way. See you tomorrow. It has been nice having you. Wow, wow, wow.